so close to nuclear war as now, humanity has never been. The world order that countries agreed upon after World War II is crumbling before our eyes. A mutual exchange of nuclear strikes can be expected in the coming years, possibly even months. But why is the threat of nuclear war so serious? In this video, we will tell you how modern nuclear weapons work, where the first missile strikes will be delivered. Can America defend itself from all nuclear missiles? And why will our government, unlike us, definitely survive a nuclear attack? Nuclear weapons are constantly evolving, so there are different types and forms. Let's try to explain the principle of nuclear weapons to you in simple words. You don't need to graduate from MIT, just a little attention will suffice. The principle of operation is as follows. Inside the bomb itself, we shoot one piece of radioactive material, uranium, for example, at another piece of uranium. Why? To scatter the radioactive nuclei of atoms into fragments. As a result of this reaction, we get such a powerful explosion that the air becomes as solid as a wall and sweeps away everything in its way. This is how we describe to you how the nuclear weapon that was used against Japan works. But soon thermonuclear weapons also appeared. Here everything is even more powerful. Inside the bomb, a mini nuclear explosion is made, which in turn acts on a special substance, heavy hydrogen. As a result, energy equivalent to a million tons of TNT is released, its atoms begin to merge with each other, igniting a small sun for a few seconds. You didn't miss here. The temperature at the epicenter of the explosion is about 6,000 degrees Celsius, which will erase you, your home, and all other organic compounds in a matter of milliseconds. Congratulations, now you know how nuclear weapons work. While you're thinking about clicking the red button, please subscribe to my channel. The military also wondered about this when they received the first experimental samples of nuclear weapons. How to drop this bomb over your enemy city while surviving. For this, humanity invented the nuclear triad. That is, the enemy will be attacked in three different ways to make it harder to defend. By water, land and air. Let's imagine that Putin has finally gone completely insane and decided to attack the United States. While planes and submarines are moving to the shores of the enemy, intercontinental ballistic missiles are launched from silos or mobile launchers on Russian territory. Since they are very fast, capable of circling the entire Earth in an hour, they are aimed at the same silos on the enemy's territory. The task is to prevent them from carrying out their retaliatory strike. But how do the Russians know where the American nukes are located? Surely the spies have already sniffed everything out. The thing is, this information is publicly available. When signing the treaty on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, states declassified information about the location of bases, types, and number of warheads. This was supposed to show the openness of countries and reduce the level of suspicion between countries possessing nuclear weapons. So, who on earth has weapons capable of destroying our entire civilization in a matter of hours, you will ask. Get ready to count. In 1968, the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons was concluded. It states that there are five nuclear countries in the world. The United States, the USSR, France, Britain, and China. They are also permanent members of the UN Security Council. However, not all countries joined this treaty. So nuclear weapons are also possessed by Pakistan, India, North Korea, more recently, and probably Israel. Iran is also very eager to acquire nuclear weapons, but due to sanctions and successful actions of Israeli intelligence, they are not very successful. Let's immediately note that 90% of nuclear potential belongs Russia and the United States. Let's start with the United States. This is the first country to manufacture a nuclear bomb and the only one to use it during the war. In total, the Americans conducted more than a thousand tests and currently have 5,500 nuclear warheads in combat readiness or in storage. 
At the same time, the United States is the only country in the world that is reducing its nuclear stockpile. For comparison, at the peak of the Cold War in the mid-1960s, the United States had over 31,000 warheads in its possession. According to expert estimates, the Russians have about 6,000 nuclear warheads. This is one of the two countries that threatens the whole world with the use of nuclear weapons. Russian propagandists regularly make stories about how they can send Britain to the bottom of the ocean or turn the United States into radioactive ash at will. Moreover, Putin himself recently stated that Russia could use nuclear weapons if it feels threatened. China and North Korea have up to 400 warheads between them, while China, despite its plans to seize Taiwan, is trying to refrain from nuclear threats. The North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un threatens to strike America several times a year, and sometimes even a week. Here's the most interesting part. Can America defend itself against a massive nuclear attack on its territory? We already know that combined attacks will occur simultaneously from land, air, and sea. The main missiles carrying nuclear warheads are intercontinental ballistic missiles. How does it work? First, it rises into space, flies there for a while, and then descends into the atmosphere where it falls on the target. It was previously thought that hitting a ballistic missile during its descent was almost impossible. But Russia's aggression against Ukraine has proven the opposite. Brave Ukrainians have shot down dozens of ballistic targets, including the Kinjal air ballistic missile, which until now was considered invulnerable. By the way, they shot them down with the help of the Patriot air defense system, which the Ukrainians were given by the Americans, and which Putin called morally outdated. Who's outdated now, Vladimir? In addition to the Patriot, the U.S. missile defense system also has its maritime counterparts, the Aegis missiles, and their, roughly speaking, brothers on steroids, the THAAD systems, which shoot down enemy targets two to three times further than the Patriots. But there is one problem. All these systems will work at the altitude where the interception of a nuclear missile, one way or another, will have consequences for infrastructure, economy, and ecology. After all, an electromagnetic pulse also spreads after the explosion of a nuclear bomb, which shuts down all electronics within the diameter of the explosion. You can also shoot down a missile in space, but there it is, well protected by a camouflage system. Okay, you'll say, let's shoot them down in space. But it's not that simple. The thing is, at this stage of the flight, the warhead can break up into several smaller warheads that will fly in different directions. In addition, various debris, empty dummies, and balls are additionally thrown out to confuse the interception system. The United States has missile defense systems that can shoot down such missiles in space. Really. For this, they don't even carry explosives. After all, it won't work in space anyway. It's enough just to collide with the right object and knock it off course. But there is a downside here too. Why? This was one of the points of the Treaty on Nuclear Deterrence between America and the USSR. The logic was that there should be more nuclear missiles than missile defense systems. Otherwise, there would be no logic in having nuclear weapons at all. Strange, but true. So let's try to model a terrible scenario. A regular 350 kiloton nuclear warhead has exploded over New York. Let us remind you that the explosion will be at a height of several hundred meters from the ground. For example, near the top of the Empire State Building, a fireball a kilometer wide and resembling the sun will appear over Manhattan. In just one second, it will cool down from 100 million degrees Celsius to a laughable 6,000. In the process, energy will radiate in the form of light, heat, and radiation. Of course, everything on the ground beneath it will be burned. But at a distance of eight kilometers, people will only get third degree burns. After that, the shock wave will crush all buildings and some shelters within a two kilometer radius. But there's also good news. 
anyone who is more than two kilometers from the epicenter of the explosion can survive even in basements and parking lots. In remote corners of the city, it will only blow out the windows. It turns out that the Bronx will not even notice the nuclear explosion. Unfortunately, this single warhead will kill hundreds of thousands of people and millions will be injured. And dozens, if not hundreds of such missiles will fly to Denver, Washington, Miami, and so on. Those who remain unharmed should not rejoice too soon because the climate will suffer the most from nuclear war. While cities and forests are burning, it will be very hot on the planet. But immediately after that, it will become really cold. The fact is that millions of tons of soot and smoke will rise into the sky and block access to the sun, that star that gives us life. Thus, nuclear winter will come to us. Or nuclear autumn. Nuclear autumn? I've never heard of such a thing, you will say. I'll say the same to you at the stage of preparing this video. In the event of a local nuclear conflict, so as not to provoke anyone, let's say between France and Britain, the sides may launch 50 warheads each. Then 5 million tons of black smoke will fly into the air. The temperature on the planet will drop by a couple of degrees, which will distance us from global warming, but will lead to famine that 2 billion people will experience. And a nuclear winter awaits humanity in the event of a Russian attack on the United States. Then hundreds of tons of black smoke will rise. We will forget about sunlight for a long time. And the air will become 20 degrees colder. Humanity will return to the Stone Age. But this applies to the majority of the ordinary people of the country. Our top leadership has a contingency plan in case of nuclear war. The fact is that most warheads will explode at a certain height above ground, so rising to 10 to 12 kilometers seems like the best solution. For this, the heads of state have a doomsday plane. Wherever the President of the United States flies, the Boeing E-4 always follows him. On this plane, there is all the necessary equipment, protected from the damaging elements of a nuclear explosion. Up to 100 people can be on board. For this aircraft, there is a whole link of refueling planes ready to give it the ability to stay in the air for weeks after the nuclear apocalypse, so that they can safely land in a safe place after the end of the active bombing phase. It was created specifically for apocalyptic scenarios. If the territory of the United States was attacked, the president with the necessary amount of administration will manage those parts of the forces that remain in contact coordinating further strikes against the enemy. On board number one, there is a kitchen, food supply, a meeting room, an operations area for communication with the remnants of the armed forces, and even a recreation room. In total, the US Army has four such planes. In Russia, such a plane is called the Il-80. There is much less information about it since it is classified but several such planes have already been involved in scandals, as some of them were looted and some were in disrepair. Whether other world leaders have similar planes is not definitively known, but Kim Jong-un does have a plane that he occasionally travels on. This is the Soviet Il-62, which was created back in the 60s, so it is quite possible that Judgment Day for this dictator could come at any moment. All this sounds bad, doesn't it? But you won't believe it, nuclear weapons have um, advantages too. What if I tell you that nuclear weapons have already saved millions of human lives? The thing is, it works pretty well as a deterrent mechanism. Why start a total war if we're going to lose it? This thought resonates in the offices of each superpower almost monthly, I'm sure. A very simple and therefore even more brilliant in its simplicity concept. It has found its reflection in the figures as well. From the moment of its invention until 2021, mortality in wars on Earth has decreased by, listen, 95%. Impressive, isn't it? So, is it worth fearing nuclear war? Of course it is. It will differ from everything humanity has ever seen before. There will be no winners in a nuclear war. It will bring us nothing but billions of deaths. 
and the destruction of our planet.